We're moving into the Sweet 16. You and I did not talk, and this is the first time that we have ever done this. We both took vacation during the opening of the NCAA tournament. Uh, we both needed a vacation. I will certainly say that. But let's talk about Sweet 16. We're not necessarily going to make picks about the Sweet 16 right now. Um, but uh, I'm curious, your thoughts on who is going to make the Final Four out of the 16 that we've got. We have got, in the West, Gonzaga against Arkansas, Texas Tech against Duke, and the two winners will play each other for the Final Four. In the East, you've got North Carolina against UCLA, and then you've got Purdue against St. Peter's, and the Peacocks, of course, being the big story of the tournament thus far, a 15 seed in the Sweet 16. In the South region, you got Arizona against Houston, and then Michigan against Villanova. And then finally, in the Midwest, you've got Kansas against Providence, and Miami against Iowa State, a 10 seed against an 11 seed. Uh, some pretty fun matchups. Uh, you've got 31 combined national titles between the teams that are in the Sweet 16, and that is a pretty, pretty awesome deal. you got big, big names in this. We'll, uh, we'll talk here in a minute about the SEC and the Big Ten, uh, kind of underwhelming, of course. But, uh, but give me your thoughts here. I, I've got who I think is going to make the Final Four out of this group, but, uh, but I'm curious your thoughts. So you, uh, you want me to go through those lists again, or do you have an idea in your head of, of who so you I'm, think is going to make it? I'm, I'm guessing the best way I can because I don't have a bracket in front of me. I don't know who plays who. Gotcha. Okay. So, and, and, and if you just try to run it off again, it, it, you know, it's not going to do a whole lot of good. <laughs> I like Arkansas. I think Arkansas is tough. Somebody's coming out of this SEC. Uh, our, our conference was too strong to not have somebody uh, come through. The team that I like the most that is left in the tournament, it's Houston. Houston. I, 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 I'm going to tell you this. I know, and we'll get to it in a minute. I know LSU has a job opening, um, it, it, and it is because of NCAA issues. Kelvin Sampson's uh, been uh, uh, had some of those problems in the past, so I think there's zero chance that they'll go with him. I love Kelvin Sampson. There's never a team that that man coaches that I just don't think is the toughest team on, on the planet. They're no, long, with you. they're athletic, and, and, and they are mentally and physically tougher than anybody they play. They, don't, they, they do not care – there's no way there should be a five seed. There's not 20 teams in the country better than them. Uh, they're a five seed because of name only, and and because they're you know they're from the little old well, uh, American. Well, well let's let, 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 let's correct that. Let's correct the reason they were a five seed. Trust me, their their Ken Palm rating. They are number two in the country, but they did not have a single quad one win other than that's, that's against Memphis. The conference that they're in. Agreed, agreed. But they, that's what I'm saying. Every quad one opportunity that they had this season, they lost. Early in the, so the resume wasn't there to give them a really high seed. That doesn't mean that they're not a fantastic basketball team, which they always are. Uh, you talked about an LSU job opening, by the way. Uh, that is not open anymore. That deal is done. Uh, Murray State's Matt McMahon is the new LSU basketball guy. We'll talk about that when we get oh, to the coaching carousel in okay. just a little bit. All right, I did. So, okay, got yeah, it. That's just happened um, within the last little bit. So, uh, so but yeah, so I like I Houston. Like, I like Houston. I like I like Houston, and I like um, um, uh, 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 Michigan. Michigan, those those are in Arkansas. So I don't know who plays who. They might match up against one another. <laughs> Houston and um, Michigan uh, will will like they will have to match up against each other. Uh, I will tell you who I've got uh, in in the West. I've got Gonzaga, and I think that they'll meet up against UCLA in the Final Four again. Uh, so that's the West against the East, and then the South. Uh, you've got Arizona and Houston playing, and then Michigan and Villanova. I think Villanova ends up coming out of that one. I could totally see Houston. Uh, I mean, the ratings actually have Houston favored in that game. I don't know what the odds are as we speak, but uh, but Houston should, according to the numbers, actually be favored over the one seed Arizona there. Uh, and then in the Midwest, Kansas against Providence, Miami against Iowa State. I think Kansas probably gets that one done. Uh, Providence, you know, their their advanced metrics not great, but they do have some old dudes. I could see Providence winning that game, and then it's just a free for all. I have no idea if Kansas doesn't get out of that one. But, uh, but, yeah, Gonzaga against UCLA, Villanova against Kansas, I think that's what the Final Four will look like. Uh, but but I could totally see Houston getting there or or Michigan, one of those other ones. And, uh, and well, Arkansas I, is going to give I Gonzaga problems. Yeah. I, I went in this tournament saying this. I don't believe any of the one seeds are actually one seed because I don't think – and that's that they're not deserving. I don't think there's any difference in them in, in, the, in the number 10 team. I just don't. Yeah. You can look at their resumes, and that's fine. But, but I'm just telling you, I think this is the year – one seed ain't making it. It's not going to be very chalky. It's been way more chalky than I thought. But uh, but if we end up with two one seeds in this final four, I will be I will be absolutely shocked. 
Um, I'll tell you a team that I would bet substantial amounts of money on ain't making it. Okay. And, and that's a team that should have lost yesterday. And, and Michigan State's just not very good. And that is the Duke Blue Devils. I, let me, let me tell you what I see when I watch this team. Now I've only watched this team. I watched both North Carolina games throughout the regular season, the last game they lost. And, and then, and then I've saw them in the ACC tournament and I've seen them in this tournament. Okay. So it's not like I've watched them all year. But what I see from Duke is a team that mirrors their coach in the sense of, and, and most people say, well, that's got to be a great thing. That's got to be a compliment because it's Coach K. And let me tell you what I mean by that. I think they play selfish ass basketball and they got a coach that has made this season all about him and his players have every, every, every possession. They, it's all about them. They do not play like a team. They do not pass the ball the way they used to. They don't share the ball. They, 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 they go down, they play ISO ball. And, and as soon as they play a good team, because they haven't played a good team yet in this tournament, as soon as they do, they will lose. Well, that will probably be in this first game in the Sweet 16 against Texas Tech. Well, yeah. I, I'm curious but, what they're going to look Michigan like State, Michigan, in this look, one. I love it. Michigan State's yeah. not a good team. And everybody in the world said Michigan State's not a good team. Okay. It, it, they, they got lucky to play Michigan State. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I think they kind of set that matchup. I mean, Michigan State had to play Davidson. Uh, Duke, of course, had a 15 seed in the first round, which, you know, obviously Kentucky <laughs> let us know that uh, that you can't take anything for granted. But, uh, but yeah, at Duke against Texas Tech, at what the Red Raiders are doing on defense, of course, it just continues on. Even without Chris Beard, they are awesome. Like, they are going to that's make it a grind-out game. Style. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you, Houston joining the Big 12, Jesus, man, next year. Oh, yeah. Big 12 is going to be something. Oh, and in basketball, it's going to be crazy. Absolutely That's what, crazy. Yeah, they, they, are, they have really set their game up in basketball. Now, as long as Kelvin Sampson's there, and, and he will be there for the duration. I don't think he's I going anywhere. I don't see him not being there yet. Yeah, I think he's, I mean, he's getting close to retirement age. Uh, but when he de- oh. like when he decides to hang it up, I think Houston has kind of let it be known, hey, I, Kelvin's son is probably going to take over. Well, and I don't, man, no, be, be real careful about retirement age, okay? That man took his shirt off in that locker room, and he danced with champagne getting poured all over him. And and I'm gonna tell you, he he looks like he's in fine shape. Okay, agreed, agreed. No, you are not wrong about that. Let's uh, let's look. He is he is 66 years old. So he, he I mean, oh, maybe he's geez. not he close. Coach another 12 years, 15 yeah. years. He he could coach he's for a while. Any? Come on. So I, I, I know everybody I talked that. about this uh, not that long ago. He's been there since 2014. Um, yep. you know. It's it's interesting. I don't think he's going anywhere. I'll, I'll just say that I don't think he's going anywhere. So, oh no, well, with them joining the Big Twelve, there aren't a whole lot of jobs that have taken a Kelvin Sampson that 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 are better than what he's got. Yeah, no, no, you're not wrong. Uh, the way that Houston is set up right now, uh, it's a good league for them to be in. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.